Welcome, February 17th, 24. We begin our Lenten journey this week. Lent is the 40 days and 40 nights leading up to Holy Week and Easter. And good evening once again, everybody. Welcome back to Lebanon. Prelude tonight is Creating Me. Let week one worship, February 17th, 24, 6.30 p.m., Lebanon, Connecticut. Lent is a time of going very deeply into ourselves. What is it that stands between us and God, between us and our brothers and sisters, between us and life, the life of the spirit? Whatever it is, let us relentlessly tear it out without a moment's hesitation.
And these are the messages that will be presented during Lent. Next week, it will be what does the cross represent? And there are the rest. Well, tonight we are doing this, and this is a re-recording from yesterday. Yesterday's service had a lot of errors, and we are trying to get views. So, so please spread the word, but receive the call to worship. Come, all you people, come and worship. God has made a covenant with us. Come, all creatures of the earth, come and worship. God has made a covenant with all creatures. Remember the covenant and be thankful. God remembers the covenant and God will save you. And will you please rise and say with me, open in him, my hope is built on nothing less, 526. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest phrase. I wholly lead on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In you high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covered in his blood, he'll pour me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sad, all other ground is sick and sad. Solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. He shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I am in him be found. In his righteousness alone. Following those who stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Lord, tonight we begin our Lenten journey. Our hope is built on nothing less than your righteousness. All ground we stand on is like sinking sand, but your ground is not. Tonight, by your spirit and in your word, joy to sing this day and every day. For we ask this in your name. Amen. Come, Christians, join the sing. Mercy. Immediately repentance and the joy of the Lord came to him. 
225. Come, Christians, join to sing. Alleluia. Amen. Love praise to Christ our King. Alleluia. Amen. Let all with heart and voice before his throne rejoice. Praise is his gracious choice. Alleluia. Amen. Come lift your hearts on high. Alleluia. Amen. Yet praises fill the sky. Alleluia. Amen. He is our guide and friend. To us he'll condescend. His love shall never end. Alleluia. Amen. Get our Christ again. Alleluia. Amen. Life shall not end the strain. Alleluia. Amen. On heaven's blissful shore, his goodness will adore. Sing and forevermore. Alleluia. Amen. Anthem tonight is The Cross Says Come.
forward. All right. Thank you, Quiet. That was very pretty. And yes, we will be using that one again. So the anthem tonight, excuse me, the offertory tonight is a breathing place. This is kind of falls into the message of the temptation of Jesus and how we can refocus and recenter ourselves. And will the ushers please come forward as we receive the evening's gifts and offer it. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. So a breathing place.
Please rise. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, this service is like a breathing place where we can just take some time out of life and to think about what really matters. So take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world. We begin our walk to the cross and continue our walk through this spring semester and hopefully our walk back to the one we want to be with. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. All right, well, welcome back, everybody, and I apologize. We had to stop Saturday, and here we are today. So the reading for this service is Matthew 4, 1 to 11, and this is the temptation of Jesus, and it actually looks at how the temptation of life Next, Jesus was taken into the wild by the Spirit for the test. The devil was ready to give it. Jesus prepared for the test by fasting 40 days and 40 nights. That's really, that's where the 40 days and 40 nights come from. That left him, of course, in a state of extreme hunger, which the devil took advantage of in the first test, since you are God's son, speak the word that will turn these stones into loaves of bread. Jesus answered by in Deuteronomy, it takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from God's mouth. For the second test, the devil took him to the holy city. He sat him on top of the temple and said, Since you are God's son, jump. The devil goaded him by quoting Psalm 91. He has placed you in the care of angels. They will catch you so that you won't so much as stub your toe on a stone. Jesus counted with another citation from Deuteronomy. Don't you dare test the Lord your God. With the third test, the devil took him to the peak of a high mountain. He gestured expansively, pointing out all the earth's kingdoms. How glorious they all were. Then he said, they're yours, lock, stock, and barrel. Just go down on your knees and worship me, and they're yours. Jesus refused old Kurt, beat it, Satan. He bats his rebuke with a third quotation from Deuteronomy. Worship the Lord your God and only him. Serve him with absolute single-heartedness. The test was over. The devil left. And in his place, angels, angels came and took care of him. Here ends the reading. May God have the blessing to the reading of these holy words. So, as I started talking about, obviously, we are restarting this message. The temptation of Jesus is the beginning of the Lenten journey. So if you think about where we are in the calendar, basically we have his birth. Let me back up. So we have Advent, 
his birth at Christmas, Epiphany, and now we're in Lent. Lent is also part of his teachings. So throughout these 40 days, he will sometimes say, like, you know, the Son of Man is about to go down the road, and so on. The temptation of Jesus is, a, is power and prestige. Do we allow temptation to take over? Is there a power from temptation? Well, that's a good question. There could be. Now, let's sort of think about, let's think about when we're younger. Now, when the hormones start running around, and obviously we get nasty thoughts in our minds, which leads to watching dirty movies. But that also leads down to going visiting places that you probably should not visit. That leads down to what to what we call the hookup sites. Now people are gonna do what they're going to do, but this is a serious problem in this community. People want the quick fit. People don't want to enjoy each other's company anymore. They don't want to just go out and have a good time. Everybody just wants what they want when they want it. The fact is, that's not safe. That isn't safe. At any age, it's not safe. What also blew, blows me away is um, I had an interesting conversation with a viewer in Massachusetts over the weekend, and he was talking about, you know, his marriage and things like that. And it led, that led down to a lot of temptation. Now, Obviously, people are going to try different things and so on. But when does the light bulb go off and realizing that what you're doing is wrong? When does that light bulb go off? You see, these apps play with your mind. And what that leads to is finding yourself using them multiple times during the day. That is not, that's not the way to live. It isn't. Now, mind you, you might meet a good person, you know, every, you know, on the rare occasion. But the reality is, it's not safe. It's not safe. We talk about power and prestige, but we also got to think about this idea of, like I was talking about, say somebody had come back, just for argument's sake. Say somebody did come back, what would that be like? Would it be the same? Would it be different? I think it would be very different compared to the first time. Because we have to remember that what was done is done. We can't turn back time. And certainly we can't go back to how it was because that didn't do us any good. Most of the time, yes, most of the time it was good. I'll give it that. But when we look at this, This is about testing our spirits, testing our minds 
finding that inner strength within ourselves to be able to speak up, to be able to have the attention, to be given the time of day. This also shows shows us how Jesus is developing. So you figure he's about 30 here. So he's a full grown adult now. Remember, he was crucified as a human. There's so much that could be done about this situation. There's so much that can be done about it. But a lot of times, these situations, when you're in these kind of relationships, they should have been handled a long time ago. And if they weren't handled then, who's to say they're going to be handled any better now? Because if we really want to be with somebody, then be with them. Simple as that. You're gonna have your disagreements. You're gonna have your ups and downs. But you're not but in a normal relationship, you don't have this pattern of where it goes up, goes down, up and down, like a heart monitor. It doesn't work like that. That leads down to a road of being on edge. And having the temptation to do something that probably might regret later on. In relationships, we, we, we see it all the time. Abusive relationships, people coming after each other, domestic violence, and everything. Is this really what they wanted? Is it what they wanted? Because that's temptation. Turning stones into bread. Well, if you turn stone into bread, it's going to be hard as a rock. And obviously you will break your teeth. This is what we are talking about. If we really want something, we have to go get it. We have to go get it in a way that works. Think about the Charlie Puth saw that's hilarious. He says, look at all the tables, look at all the tables of terror. Get you fired, we realize it, how bad you messed it up. That right there tells us that he's talking to the one that did the deed. And then he says, you took away a year of my blank life. So we wasted a year with whoever he was with. This is similar to the events of four years ago. Recall from four years ago, maybe three years ago, I can't remember. But anyway, the West Haven experience follows, follows into that idea, you took away a year of my life. Because while there were good times in that relationship, it was very one-sided and a lot of entitlement, it seemed like. But we don't know, but we don't know how to handle ourselves in situations. 
And the reason why we don't know how to handle ourselves is because we've never been in that situation before. How entitled does one have to be? Why does everybody think they have to do extra things just to get noticed? They don't. They don't. There is no need to feel like you have to do everything. That's unrealistic. See, this is what Jesus is telling us. That that we have to be able to be held accountable for what we do. And we have to be able to take responsibility for our own actions. Remember, actions have consequences, both positive and negative. And most of the time, those results that we talked about, that we have talked about, as far as, you know, visiting with somebody, most of the time, those results were good. But every once in a while, the results were negative. And it's based on one person's point of view. Because if we look at one person's point of view, it usually means they came from a broken childhood. Where they have trust issues, where they are insecure, and just so on. It's really sad when you think about it. Because in their minds, going to the far extreme is the answer. Versus somebody who may not have experienced that, have a, have a difference of opinion. This is the temptations of life. There's so many temptations around us every day. Excuse me, I got a sneeze. The temptation of life is everywhere. Breaking cycles that have been going on for years. If we can't break the cycle, who is? Who is? The only one that has any control over our behavior is our, is us. We can give suggestions to other people. We can give recommendations. But whether or not they want to follow those recommendations or suggestions, that is on them. There are reasons why things happen. I'm sure there are. But are we going to get those reasons? No. No. Probably for reasons that we might not be able to comprehend or reasons that we might find just not right at all. It is sad when you think about it that here you are, you're trying to do the right thing and you're trying to, you know, help them out. You're trying to be with them, but then we know what the outcome is. So what we have to do is we have to be able to find a common ground. Stopping these temptations, stopping these intrusive thoughts and impulses.
There was this woman that had 10 kids. It was in Ohio. This woman had 10 kids. And she wanted two more to make 12. That's temptation right there. It's called birth control. Ten? Are you kidding me? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. One is enough. Two or three, okay. But ten? That is like, wow. There's temptation. Also, as you may or may not have heard about, there was this case in Florida a couple of years ago that we've been that we've been studying footage of. Now, in Florida, there was this case of this woman, who's about 24, we're not going to identify her, who was driving extremely reckless, extremely drunk, running through stop signs, speeding, doing She's so lucky she did not cause an accident. So she pulls over. And right before the cop can come out and, you know, say, what is it? License, registration, insurance, and so on. She takes off. She takes off. A few minutes later, I think it was like two or three minutes later, pulls over again. But this time, the cop isn't too happy. And she comes out saying, for what? You know, what did I do? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, and then she goes back in her car and, they, and, they, and, it, and it starts all over again. She's like, I own this town. I'm sorry, honey. No, you don't. No, you don't. Finally, the cops finally intervened. She's like, call my father, call my father, call my father. And it's like, no. It's like, first of all, you're 24 years old. You do know the difference between right and wrong. And it's like you should know what you did because you just engaged in very dangerous activity. She whittled into the temptation and she whittled into entitlement. Because obviously this girl has never, ever been held accountable for her own actions. Because these entitled kids, they, they, these rich, entitled kids, they think that they don't have to be held responsible for what they do. They have never been disciplined. And that they left their, in that they walk all over their parents. The parents hand them everything. Why have why did these parents say no? So what if your kid's gonna have a meltdown if you say no? When she was detained. It got worse. He's like, what did I do? And the cops like explained it to her multiple times. And she just kept asking and asking and asking. Because this is what they do. When you are when they are drunk, they can't comprehend what you just told them. Whereas a normal person who is sober. 
may have engaged in that activity, in whatever those offenses were, they would have been like, I know, I'm sorry, here's my stuff. And then, you know, five, ten minutes later, they would be like, okay, well, don't do it again. Here's your ticket. Ticket, warning, or whatever, because this is the world that we live in, guys. There is temptation all over the place. It could very well be in our own backyards. It could be very well in this own, in our state and around the world. This is exactly why we need law and order. There are two theories here. The one theory is that if you say, let me go 50 times, they're obligated to let you go. Obviously, that is a false statement. Obviously, if you're cuffed, there's a very good reason why you are cuffed. You know, there's a, probably a good reason why you're going to spend a night or two in a 9 by 12 room with one way in and one way out. The second theory is that if you... The second theory is if you try to seduce them, if you try to do this, you try to do that, that doesn't work either. Because the cops are trained. They know that stuff. They know everybody's going to play the same tricks that have probably been done for years. So as we go through this Lenten journey, this is about self-reflection, looking at how we see the world and how do we make changes for people that we love and people that we care about. And also, how do we bring back in the one we want to be with? This is exactly what Lent is about. It's self-reflection and figuring out a way to make everything work. And that is today's message. Amen. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. This Lord, there is so much temptation in the world. 
in our own lives and in our own town. There are reasons why things happen. Sometimes we don't have an answer. Maybe an answer isn't going to be given. But you always have an answer. We think about this Lenten journey. This journey of self-reflection and having the ability to come back together with those we care about, with those we want to be with. Where we can leap over our own barriers and our own hurdles, the obstacles that get in the way. And surely the presence of you is in this house. To be able to lay down the groundwork. To put something into action where we talk the talk and walk the walk. No more messing around and people playing games with us. We continue to pray for a new Boston. We continue to pray for word study to work out. And we also pray, of course, for opportunity with the one that we were with. And for the viewers at home, we pause. It gave you the chance to lift up those that you know. And so it's to this end. Like the three tests, we are tested every day. Whether or not we choose to act on these temptations is our own personal choice. But we have to remember that when we act on these things, that there are positive and negative consequences for our actions. And, you, and we will see that time and time again when you tell your disciples what is going to happen to you. As it is in that prayer that you taught us saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as earth and it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God be with you till we meet again.
We see the red at you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he help you be able to avoid facing temptation and the test of whatever life throws at you. And we will be back on Friday, February 23rd, for Lent Week 2. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ eternal, the King of Christ eternal, the King of Kings. The name of the Lamb was slain. Christ eternal, the King of Kings, the King of And finally, to this altar.
to the extreme entitlement of this country. This next piece, my very The way this woman reacted surprised everyone, including the officers on site. And there you go. There's the next video and the next service. And have a great rest of the week, guys. Thank you for watching.